art can tell so many different stories, even though it could just be one portrait you're looking at, it could tell a thousand different stories. You never get your idea from nowhere. You always have to start from somewhere and you have, always have to look up to someone that you can relate to and somebody that can answer the questions that you don't necessarily know the answers to. Education is the great liberator. It really is the great liberator of the human soul, the human spirit and the human intellect. That is why education is so important. That is embodied in the, in the life and work of Naz Bukhari and that is now also uh, distilled in so much of the work of the Naz Legacy Foundation. Everyone living in this country now, no matter how many generations they've been in this country, they are part of this country, they belong to this country, they have a little piece of ownership over this country. There's a problem in terms of people from disadvantaged backgrounds and people from ethnic minorities not coming to museums of this sort. And that's something which I think we can and should address. There's no logical reason why that should be. I think this has been a topic of change for some time and it's been something people have thought about in relation to gender, in relation to cultural diversity and race, but also in relation to sometimes more complex issues around religion, about cultural identification, sometimes around age and about sexuality. Any of these are factors that make one think, well, who are museums for and how can we make sure that they're for everybody who wants to find a use for them, an engagement with them and to get inspiration from them? Helping young people to broaden their minds and their horizons through arts, music, visits to galleries, museums, all this education, encouragement, encounter and experience helps to keep blinkers off the eyes and chips off the shoulders. And to look at these uh, youngsters um, who had not been to the gallery before, and I suspect probably didn't realise that actually they were going to be exposed to a portrait, and I could see it in the reactions, which really, really spoke to them. Tell me, what you, what's the first thing that struck you about this painting? You see that the glare he's giving is very pure and innocent, so it shows that he was a kind and responsible person. Do you see suffering in his face? Or? I, I see like a sort of rebellious sort of character. Building their own confidence um, and understanding their own views and being able to express those and the different ways of seeing and understanding each other is really important. Living where they live in the inner city estate, they have very little opportunity to come out and experience the day they're having today. Naturally, it inspires questions in them. To show the diversity um, shown with the portraits, that really reflects our school and reflects our community. I think it's expanded and broadened their horizons, uh, which is an important part of their learning. I was really inspired by all the paintings and the stories behind them. Hearing the stories behind the people in the art, I think we have a broader aspect on and a broader view on life in general. I just thought pictures are pictures, but then they had so much history behind them and you learn more about the past and you can change the future. Dialos painting. He didn't try to blend in with um, the society that he was living in. He kept his um, own tradition, his religion, everything before him, even though he suffered probably through his life, but he always had that uh, belief and he was a great role model. That guy was a slave, some man owned him, okay, he was like owned by a man. But he still managed to get to the status and position that he's, he's in now and look, we're talking about him how many years after his death and there are pictures of him in galleries. We need somebody to, to look up to and to know that if they did it, why can't we? We all have a duty as adults, we all have a duty as society, we all have a duty as teachers especially, to introduce children to, to thoughts, experiences, to uh, inspiration, uh, and to a great art and to great uh, teaching which they otherwise would not have access to so that they can think big and dream big about their own future. I mean it's something that Nas did for children that he taught and now in his name for thousands of others will benefit from that same opportunity. The Prime Minister has asked me to present to the Nas Foundation a big society award. This award is a recognition of the Foundation's hard work uh, to inspire young people to strive for excellence and to play a full part in their community. So it's well deserved. It gives me great pleasure to award the inaugural Certificate of Appreciation to Mr. Shabir Randari CBE. This year's honorary fellowship to the director of the National Portrait Gallery, Sandy Nair. I think the NAS Legacy Foundation is one of those initiatives that is about inspiration, that is saying, here's an inspiring figure who made change in education and someone we can all learn from and say, well, how else can each of us try and make some change? And I think knowing that that lives on, that's what's important.